Welcome back to our walkthrough series of the Starting Point Labs on Hack the Box. This is geared for beginners trying to learn more about penetration testing and ethical hacking. Today we're going to be going over the Fawn Machine. Before we begin, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. And if you do, be sure to share it with a friend, like, comment, subscribe. And I hope you learned something new today. Okay. And as usual, when connecting to any box within the Hack the Box environment, we're going to have to set up some tunnel into the network, either by using OpenVPN or spawning the VPC instance. Uh, I already have my OpenVPN connection in, and so we're just going to click Spawn Machine and wait for that instance to create itself. Okay, now that we can see our target machine is up, we are going to see if we can reach it. 0% packet loss, TTL 63. Um, still let me know in the comments if you can figure out what this information can lead to when enumerating the target set without already knowing the operating system beforehand. Now getting into the first task, what does the three letter acronym FTP stand for? Now FTP is a network protocol used for basically transmitting files between computers. Um, it is considered an application layer protocol for you OSI model peeps out there. Um, but basically FTP stands for file transfer protocol. So we can go ahead and Type that in. First one done. So moving on to task two, what communication model does FTP use architecturally speaking? So this one you may have to Google. There's no shame in that. Google has gotten me through many problems. But FTP's communication model is basically a client server model. Now you may ask, what exactly is that? The client server model describes how a server provides resources and services to one or more clients. Some examples of this are like web servers, mail servers, and file servers, which FTP being one of them. Uh, like. When you interact with a mail server, everyone doesn't have their own mail server kind of thing, right? And so we submit this answer and moving on to the next one. Ask three, what is the name of one popular GUI FTP program? So GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. Now there are a couple out there, there's Transmit, win SCP, but this uh, answer is looking for a popular one known as FileZilla. Um, another way, since this is a very like particular software, just Google it, GUI FTP, first one that comes up, FileZilla. Ask four. Which port is the FTP service active on usually? The key term here is usually. So FTP uses TCP as a transport, but we haven't said or discussed what port it actually uses. So for port numbers 21 and 20, these are both used for FTP, but primarily port 21 is the answer because this is used to establish the connection between the two computers or hosts. And port 20 is used to transfer the data via the data channel. Now, you may ask, also, what is the difference between TCP and UDP? So TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, whereas UDP is connectionless. So TCP, uh, you have slower, more reliable transfers. These are used in web browsing or emails or file transfer protocols because you need to ensure that the packets 
reach their destination. Now, UDP is faster, but it's not guaranteed transfer. So this is used in primarily media like live streaming, YouTube, online games, and VoIP, which is uh, voice over IP. So task five, what acronym is used for the secure version of FTP? So in regards to security, FTP is a clear text protocol. For secure transmissions that protect username, passwords, and encrypt content over the wire, primarily SFTP is used. So this stands for SSH file transfer protocol. And moving on. You guys already know the answer to this one. Uh, generally, we run this at the beginning. And that answer is ping. And now we get into our scans. So our task is to find the version of FTP currently running. So we're going to pull up Nmap, type in SV for versions, and also SC for uh, basically a simple script scan of the target. And then we're going to let that run. And after getting the results back, we can see that the version is VSFTPD 3.0.3. And also, what operating system type is running on the target? And we can see here that the operating system is a Unix device. So now our task is to get the root flag. As we can see off of our Nmap scan, anonymous FTP login is allowed and the file server contains flag.txt. A little more on this login. So anonymous FTP is basically a method for giving users access to files so that they don't need to identify themselves. So we're gonna attempt to FTP into this server using the anonymous credential for the username with no password. And we can see that a login was successful. So this file server will have a couple of familiar and a couple different commands. Um, we can start by LSing the directory to see that our flag.txt is there. But how exactly do we pull this document? Uh, we can begin by typing help, and we can see all the available commands currently given to us. Uh, as we skim quickly through this, we can see that git looks promising, doesn't it? Also, while we're at it, um, we can see here that we're entering extended passive mode. Now, if you're looking for some more information to look up on and learn about FTP, let me know in the comments what the difference between active and passive mode are. But we'll save that for later. So again, we'll ls the directory and then use git to pull this flag. As we can see that we successfully transferred the file We'll control D out of there, do an LS of our own directory and see that we have the flag now. And Okay, so now that that box was pwned, uh, join me back soon for the next one which will be dancing. Um, thank you guys for all the support. See you guys soon.